Hey, Bob Cooney coming to you live from IAPA, Europe, in London. Oh. And so that drug is virtual reality, and it's going to have an impact in ways you can't even begin to imagine. So good. <laughs> Hey, I traveled all the way to London, England to the IAPA Europe show so I could highlight for you the new location-based virtual reality products coming to market this year. So follow me and let's see what innovations IAPA has in store for us this year. If you're thinking about adding virtual reality to your entertainment center, or even if you're just curious about VR, download my VR Buyer's Guide, IAPA 22 edition, that'll be coming out just before the big Orlando show. Go to www.bobcooney slash guide. So we're going to do VR bumper cars. One of the first things I noticed is they're using video pass-through. And it's one of the first systems I've seen where I can actually see my hands. Now there's latency and it's a little weird, but I can see the wheel and grab it. And I'm seeing video, I'm seeing the camera, I'm seeing Kylie, I'm seeing the other person. I'm in the trade show. And so... You know, pass-through video is, gonna be, is a game changer with these new systems to make it easier to get in and out of the system. And you're gonna see it get better and better, which is gonna reduce the labor requirement needed for operators. Your labor cost is gonna go down. These systems are gonna be easier to operate. All right, we're going into VR. I'll see you on the backside. So I'm at the Euro Games booth, um, and you might recognize the Spree headset so this is the battery-powered bumper car version of the VR bumper car setup from Spree. And so um, IE Park makes the electric pickup, which is kind of like the theme park version of the big bumper cars. But as more and more FUCs have wanted to get into bumper cars, Eurogames is like the leader in these beautifully crafted battery-powered bumper cars. And they have the control mechanisms are, you know, two joysticks left and right instead of a steering wheel. And so you can go backwards, you can go forwards, and you can spin. And so it makes it a lot more maneuverable. And so I think the experiences that they're going to be able to build, combining VR and games with these really highly maneuverable, compact, battery-powered bumper cars, are going to be fascinating. And I can't wait to see how they do that. While the bumper cars are a new area of development for Spree, their Spree Arena has been rolling out at dozens of locations around the world. What makes Spree unique among location-based VR products is their focus on kids aged 4 to 12. They've created a library of games that appeal to younger kids, but parents love them too. There just aren't that many opportunities for parents and younger children to play together in family entertainment centers, at least not where everyone actually has fun. And Spree has somehow captured that magic. The games are silly, but with size Solid game mechanics. Anteater has people swinging their heads back and forth to catch bugs with their giant noses. Boys seem to love this one for some reason. Uh, I'm not sure why. Jumpa Cheese turns players into space mice, where they're squishing worms as they pop out of craters on a cheesy moon, so players are jumping around and really active. Granny's alien invasion has kids becoming grandmas and they're fending off aliens who are trying to steal their cakes in the kitchen. They also have other games like Firefighter, which is styled after Minecraft and Roblox type games. And they have an educational library anchored by Mission to Mars, which was created by the Hollywood special effects house Pixomondo, and they're soon going to release a new memory, math, and logic game based on the Einstein Brain Game series. And you'll notice none of these games use controllers. There's no instructions needed, you just put on a headset and you start playing. Spree is the perfect birthday party attraction. Locations that offer Spree with their top tier birthday packages on average make between fifty dollars to $150,000 in additional birthday party revenue a year. And so if you're in the party business, take a look at the Spree Arena. It'll be in over 50 locations across America by Q123, which might make them one of the fastest growing VR companies in the business today. And I'm here in front of the Hero Zone booth. Now I've been watching these guys for a long time 
full disclosure, I did some go-to-market strategy. I did a go-to-market strategy workshop with them. I don't know, 2018 maybe? So I've been watching them bring this product to market slowly and steadily. And it was really kind of a soft, they tried to launch as a SaaS program where it was software as a service. And as you know, in this industry, you kind of have to have a, hard, a, a turnkey solution. And so they finally launched this year here at this show, a turnkey VR arena that's based on my favorite headset, the Focus 3 from HTC. And I just got to play it. And it's I, really remarkable. I love what they've done. And so, and one of the things that I really liked about it was there's when you go in, there's like this little kind of like an arcade lounge, like almost like a basement, you know, home arcade. And there's a, a claw machine that you can pick up a teddy bear. And there's a couple of arcade games and there's a table. And in the table, there's like a, beer, a couple of beer bottles and there's a bottle opener. And I walked up and I was like, oh, I wonder what I could do with this beer bottle. And I grabbed it and I smashed it and it broke. I was like, oh, that's really cool. And then I saw the opener and I grabbed the opener and I, and I opened the bottle and the bottle popped open and bubbles came out the top. And I was like, oh, wow. And then I went and I poured the beer out of the bottle and I smashed the bottle. And then I went to eat the pizza and I ate the pizza. And, and so fun is a combination of discovery and surprise. And so many VR developers just don't get that. You know, at the end of the game, you get to shoot confetti out of your gun. It's the little things around the game that really show polish. And I love how these guys have really polished their system. And speaking of polish, check out this new Paradrop VR attraction from FrontGrid. I recently did this up at Surf Snowdonia and have a full report on the system coming. Uh, but this is the Gen 2 system from Matt Wells and his team. Matt's a professional paratrooper, um, crazy motherfucker, and he's created this experience that allows you to simulate what it's like parachuting and paraflying and parasailing and whatever that parachute is uh, <laughs> in virtual reality. And one of the cool things he's done is he's created some fantasy environments. But what I loved about what he did in Snowdonia was he created a custom version of the Snowdonia National Park in Wales. So you could actually, as a tour, and it's at a tourist location, so you could fly over the park and see what it's like from up above. And I think there's a lot of opportunities here to create kind of localized content for tourist attractions with this platform, and it'll be interesting to see where it winds up going in the world. Now, speaking of going places, Hollowgate's going into the paranormal with their new Ghostbusters Academy from Sony Motion Pictures. I thought we were literally going to cross the stream. I didn't realize I was going to target, so... Bump still needs some training. Still still needs some training, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, these are some of the best environments I've ever seen in a location-based VR attraction. They're beautiful, they're rich in color, and they really come to life. And because it's Ghostbusters, you immediately know the context of what you're trying to do. Capture ghosts. Now, tucked in the back of the exhibit hall is a company called Looper Space. They're from Italy, and they've got maybe a half a dozen locations scattered throughout the country. Now, as much as I wanted to love Looper Space, it's just not ready for prime time. The hardware felt really thrown together, and like batteries were falling off your head. It's just not there yet. Now, Valo Motion came all the way from Finland to launch their brand new Valo Arena attraction. Now, this isn't virtual reality, it's mixed reality, which means no headsets, no hardware, and it's fully unattended. Now, the Floor is Lava game was by far the most fun for me, and it's the one they showcase. You can see people having a great time. But the biggest innovation is actually something I've been waiting for for a while. I want to say it was at Amusement Expo in 2021 when I was coming live from Australia and I had to remote in when HTC released the Vive Focus 3. And I immediately became a fan of the headset and have been really impressed with what Vive has done to make a product that hits the market requirements for LBE. And so, like, simple things like a magnetic removable faceplate that just snaps right in and removable batteries, right? A removable headset, a removable battery that you can pull out and swap the battery really easily. And again, this is all magnetized. It just pops right back in. It's really well balanced. It's got a magnesium alloy frame. So hopefully it's gonna hold up better. And as we're getting these more in the market, we'll see you know, if it lives up to its promise. And it's super comfortable. Like, 
I put on a Quest and 10 minutes in, I gotta take the damn thing off my head because it's just really not comfortable at all. And it drives me crazy and it really limits the amount of time I'm willing to spend in, in VR. And so recently Vive released what they're calling the LBSS, which is a location-based software suite, which is a whole set of software capability that are together as a platform enabling solution providers like HeroZone and operators to roll out these headsets and operate them efficiently and affordably. And we're gonna do a deep dive coming up with HTC where we talk about that in general. But what we're seeing happening and where this trend is gonna lead us is because this headset is really kind of so perfect for where we are in the industry and the software and services that HTC has developed for our industry, we're gonna see the whole industry consolidate around the Focus 3, and it's gonna become the standard headset in the industry. The Arsenal right now is working on a tethered version of this that's always powered for their new monolith. And so I'm really excited about this headset and what it's gonna do for the industry, because now we've got a consistent platform that everybody's gonna develop on, which means if you're running an arcade and you wanna have 15 different VR attractions, they're all gonna be on the same headset. Consolidated parts, consolidated support, your techs are all gonna have to support one headset, um, and it's just gonna make everything so much easier. And, but the bottom line is, for operators, this thing is a blessing, and I can't wait to see where we go with it.